Hello everyone, welcome to another segment of Intellectual Brainstorming and uh, Academic Excellence. My name is David Oli and my YouTube channel is David Oli Reads, WIZ. I want to use this video to say a very big thank you to our returning subscribers and uh, if you are not subscribed to our channel, we want to use this medium to say that you can um, actually subscribe to this channel and also to you know click on the notification button and apart from clicking on the notification button you can leave your comments so that we can be able to serve you better today we're going to look at the clinical constitution of 1922 we're going to look at the weaknesses we're going to look at the advantages we're going to look at you know the the in total the lacuna of what of the clinical constitution of 1926 now, the Clifford Constitution of 1926 derived its name from the governor that took over from Frederick Lord Bugard. Don't forget that one of the uh, achievements of Chief Frederick Lord Bugard was that he was able to establish the Nigerian Council, which existed you know, along with the, you know, the, legis the old Legislative Council of, of uh, Lagos. But unfortunately, the Nigerian Council could not achieve much. So when Wood Clifford, who became the governor after Frederick Lord Lugard came into power, the first thing he did was to abolish, he abolished mm -hmm. the old Legislative Council for Lagos and the Nigerian Council. So what Clifford Constitution did was to introduce what we call a new elective uh, principle. He introduced what we call legislative council and a new what executive uh, council. So one of the cardinal achievements or one of the cardinal you know or aim or objective of the Clifford Constitution was that it was able to you know introduce an elective principle which helped to, uh, to awaken the spirit of nationalism in Nigeria. So the Clifford Constitution of 1922 was able to ginger, was able to motivate, was able to increase the agitation or awaken the, the spirit of nationalism in Nigeria. So unfortunately, under the Clifford Constitution, the northern part of the country was not represented in the new legislative council. So the governor, Bush Clifford, retained the power to legislate for, for the North. So the Clifford Constitution of 1922 was constituted into an executive council and what? An legislative council. So one of the objectives of the Clifford Constitution was that it was able to, to increase the number of what? Of Nigerian representation in where? In the constitution. Unlike the Nigerian council where we had, you know, six members, that number increased drastically under the Clifford Constitution of 1922. So the new Legislative Council composed of what of 20, 46 members. It composed of what of 46 members, of which 27 of the British members, including the governor, were all what official members. And 19, the remaining 19 were what were non-official members. Don't forget that the Clifford Constitution of 1922 had 46 membership, but 27 of, of them were British Air members, including the governor. And the remaining 19 were referred to as what as non-official members. So 15 of what of the non-official members were nominated by the governor to represent what various commercial interests, just like when we had seven under the Nigerian Council. So under the Clifford Constitution, it increased from 7 to 15. So they were nominated to represent commercial interests like, you know, you know, banking, mining, and the rest of them. So of the 19 non-official members, only 10 were what? Were Nigerians. If you could remember, under the Nigerian Council, we have only six. So under the new Clifford Constitution, we had the 10. That means that, that the representation has, what, has increased by what? By four. So, ten. Ten were, were Nigerians, four of which were elected, of which three represented what, Lagos and one represented the Calabar. So, out of the ten, four were what were actually elected. Three represented Lagos and one represented the 
Calabar. But one of the you know conditions that will allow you to to, to vote under the Clifford Constitution is that you must earn up to what hundred pounds per annum, and uh, you know you must have resided in the area of either Lagos or Calabar for a period of twelve months before you can vote. Before you can then uh, vote. So as a result of that, the Clifford Constitution disenfranchise disenfranchise a lot of Nigerians because a lot of them could not vote at that particular time. And also, the voting process or the power to vote was only restricted to those that were, what, that were residing in Lagos and the Calabar. But one of the achievements of the Clifford Constitution was that it led to the emergence of, of political parties in Nigeria. In fact, the first political party in Nigeria was founded by the man called Abat Macaulay in the year 1923. It was founded by the man called the Abat Macaulay in the year 1923, and that party was called NNDP, Nigerian National Democratic Party, founded by Abat Macaulay in 1923. Apart from that, it also led to the emergence of what of you know of newspaper companies. Among them was what we call the Lagos uh, Daily. So now that, let us quickly look at the Executive Council. You know, I said before that the Clever Constitution was constituted into what we call the Legislative Council and also the Executive uh, Council. We have discussed the Legislative Council now, so let us quickly look at what we call the Executive uh, Council. So if you are talking about the Executive Council under Clifford, you know, the, the Council was established by, by the Clifford Constitution. And it was only an advisory body to, to the governor, you know. So the Clifford Constitution actually, under the Executive Council, you know, the, the, the governor, it gave divergent or wider power to the governor, including the power for the governor to, to veto a bill. You understand? To veto what? A bill. So the body was made up of, you know, 10 ex-official members. 10 of uh, 10 of uh, ex-official members. That was what they were called at that time. 10 ex officials a uh, member now because of our time let us really look at the advantages of what of the clifford the uh, constitution what were the advantages in case they ask you the exam what actually were the advantages of what of you know the clifford constitution number one is that the you know the constitution prepared nigeria for self-government and this was evident during the time when nigeria became independent was in 1960 on october 1 1960. so it laid the foundation it laid what it it's served as a prerequisite for the Nigerian Council, thereby laying the foundation for, for Nigeria for self-government in 19, you know, 1960. So, the number two is that, I mentioned Lagos before, that the Lagos Daily was founded by all as a result of the Clifford Constitution. So, it led to the emergence of what of newspaper publishing house in Nigeria, most especially what, in the Lagos, in Lagos. So, also, the constitution introduced what we call elective uh, principle, which was not possible under the Nigerian uh, Council. Apart from the elective uh, principle, the Clifford constitution also led to, to the increasing of what of Nigerian in the Legislative Council. Under the former Nigerian Council, we have only six elective uh, you know, members, but under the Clifford constitution, we have what? 10 uh, members of which three represented Lagos and one represented the uh, Calabar, which was what which was a good one. So it also what led to you know it also led to what, to help to increase or fasting Nigeria's what independence. It helped to, to fasting Nigeria's uh, independence. Then apart from that, it also led to what we call the formation of political parties. The formation of what of political parties. Now because of our time also, we have mentioned our five points here. Let us now look at the demerit or the problems of the Clifford uh, Constitution. Number one is that, you know, the Constitution was a reflection of divide and rule policy. What do we mean by divide and rule policy? By divide and rule policy is that the, the elected principle the, did not extend to, to the northern part of Nigeria, and as a result, the governor was the only person legislating for the north, which is not a good one, which is not a good one. So number two is that the constitution was isolated what the northern part of Nigeria. It isolated it. Then the Clifford constitution actually helped to, to lay the foundation for, for tribalism in Nigeria. 
because it is what we call divide and rule policy. No, another one is that the constitution did not allow people to, in other part of Nigeria to vote. The voting process, those that were only allowed to vote at that particular time, were those in Lagos and Calabar, which was not good for the system, which was not good, good for the system. Then another one is that the, the, the constitution did not extend the elective principle into the executive uh, council, like I said before, that it was made of what? Of, uh, you know, 10 ex-official members. So the elective principle was not introduced under the Clifford Constitution in the executive uh, council. So these are, these are more are the problems associated with the Clifford uh, Constitution. But the Clifford Constitution can be commended because why? It gave Nigeria more representation than the Nigerian council that was made up of what? Of illiterate, stark illiterate uh, traditional rulers. But under the Clifford Constitution, you know, the Constitution allowed what? The educated elite to some extent to have a say in the political system, thereby what? Gingering the spirit of what? Of a nationalism. So the, the Clifford Constitution to some extent is what helped what? to introduce an elective principle. And don't forget that this elective principle continued right from the time of the Clifford Constitution down to Richard, down to Mafasin, down to Lee Clinton, down to the period when what Nigeria actually gained independence in 1960. So on this tour, we're going to stop on what we call the Clifford uh, Constitution. And in our subsequent class, we're going to look at what we call the Richard Constitution and also look at what we call the Mafasin uh, Constitution. So we'll meet next time. Thank you for watching our videos. And we also want to encourage a lot of people that have not watched this video to watch this video. As you can see, this video is what is helping a lot of our students in the academic uh, pursuit. My name once again is David Oni, and my YouTube channel is what is David Oni with subscribe to our channel please subscribe to this channel click on the notification button and also leave your comment and also click on the button the like button till we meet next time do keep yourself safe and have a what a wonderful time thank you so much and god bless bye bye